Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video 42. This is on biological molecules or sometimes we call those macro molecules. Um, this right here is a picture of DNA that's been extracted. Uh, we do this every year in AP Bio. We take DNA out of a banana and so you can hold it and wrap it around a little nichrome wire. Um, where is DNA? Well DNA remember is going to be found in the nucleus and so to get to it in, in our lab we use soap to dissolve through the lipids in this membrane, this membrane, we filter out the proteins and then we eventually can add it to cold alcohol and it'll come out a solution. You can hold it on a little nichrome wire, the secret of life. But to get to it, we have to go through all the other macromolecules. In other words, nucleic acids like DNA and RNA are just one of four different types of macromolecules. And so in this podcast, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the other three. And so biological molecules, there are four different types, nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. You simply have to memorize those and then memorize the monomers. So what are monomers? Well, monomers are the small building blocks that make up these biological molecules. In other words, the analogy I'll give you is those are like the letters that string together to make the words or even the stories, um, biological molecules. Now let's start with lipids because lipids actually are not made up of monomers. They're simply one monomer. Um, why are lipids important? Those make up all the cell membranes, but they're also a great source of energy. And what's a defining characteristic about them is that they have polarity. Uh, in other words, they're generally nonpolar, but certain parts of certain lipids can actually be polar. Um, let's go to nucleic acids then. So nucleic acids are going to be the DNA and the RNA. Uh, the building blocks of those are nucleotides, which are simply a sugar, a phosphate group, and then a nitrogenous base. Um, why are nucleic acids important? Well, they carry genetic material and they pass it from generation to generation. Next are the proteins. Proteins really make up almost everything that you're looking at right now when you're looking at me. I'm mostly made up of proteins. Um, proteins, the building blocks of proteins are going to be amino acids. Acids. Um, and what makes amino acids different is going to be their R group. It's just a portion of the amino acid that differentiates them from the other amino acids but gives them really important characteristics in the structure of a protein and the structure of a protein is what's important. Remember lipids don't have uh, monomers but carbohydrates or the sugars are, uh, are going to be the monomers of carbohydrates. So starch is an example of a carbohydrate, but regular sugar like glucose is a carbohydrate. Building blocks are going to be sugars, and depending on where we build off of those, where the bonds come, we can get different structures in sugar. Give us energy. Uh, lipids are going to make up those membranes. Proteins make us, and nucleic acids are going to give us the genetic material. Now, if you have monomers, when we stack those monomers together, there's going to be clear directionality. In other words, in each of these, nucleic acids, proteins and carbohydrates, depending on which direction we're adding the, the monomers, we're going to get different structures and different functions in each of those different uh, molecules. And so like I said, monomers are the building blocks of polymers. And so over here, the letters, the analogy is going to be that the letters, when you put them together, the monomers eventually become polymers. And the polymers are made <laughs> of monomers. In other words, we can take monomers, put them together, and then we can have meaning. Now what do I mean by putting them together? It's not like letters uh, inside us, it's chemicals, chemicals that are going to be bonded together. So an example, let me get a pen, example would be amino acids. So remember proteins are made up of amino acids. So here would be first amino acid, amino acid 1, amino acid 2. They're not attached together, but we're going to attach them together to build a protein. And so to attach them together, we do what's called dehydration synthesis. And it's going to be important that you understand dehydration in just a second. So let's look at this amino acid right here and this amino acid right here. And you can see that we're forming a bond between the two. But what actually is missing in that bond? Because we've got a C here, so a carbon, and we have a nitrogen here. So there's a carbon here and a nitrogen here. So what's missing when we bond those together? Well, we're missing a oxygen and two hydrogens. And so what are we missing when we attach those together? We're missing water. And so what happens in dehydration synthesis is that we lose a water and we form a bond. In this case, it's just a covalent bond, and more uh, specifically, we call that a peptide bond because it's between two peptides. So we can attach another one on this side, another one on this side, another one on this side, and eventually we have um, 
a protein. Now, that's how we put sugars together, that's how we put amino acids together, and that's how we put nucleic uh, acids as, as well as amino acids together. It's through a dehydration synthesis. Now, let's say we want to break them apart. How do we do that? Well, look, let's look. Here's our peptide bond again. How do we break that apart? Well, now we're going to add a water. And so if we add H2O here, that's going to actually break that, and now we're going to have monomer 1, monomer 2, those two amino acids again. And so where do we get the building blocks of proteins? We get it in our diet. So when I eat something, let's say I eat a big steak, what happens first? Well, that goes through my digestive system where hydrolysis occurs. We break that protein apart into its amino acids. Then I weave that back together again through a polymer to make a protein. That's what makes me. So we get that through our diet. So let's go through those four different macromolecules. Remember, our nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. So the first one are going to be the nucleic acids. Nucle nucleic acids are the genetic material, and they pass that on. Um, the two different types are RNA and DNA, and we've talked about those before. But let's talk about the nucleotide. So nucleotide is going to be the building block of a um, uh, nucleic acid. And so what are the three parts of it? Well, one part is going to be the phosphate. So we have a phosphate group. Remember with ATP, you're familiar with what a phosphate group does. Next, we have a five carbon sugar. In the case of DNA, it's going to be called deoxyribose. In RNA, it's going to be ribose. So now we've got a phosphate group attached to a sugar. And then we're going to attach to a base. And so the three parts of a nucleic acid in both RNA and DNA are going to be a phosphate group attached to a sugar attached to a base. Um, and so if we draw this up here, let's get a place where we can actually see them. There would be a phosphate here. That would be attached to a sugar here and a phosphate here and a sugar here. And so the backbone is actually made of this portion right here. It never changes. It's a phosphate attached to a sugar attached to a phosphate attached to a sugar. And then what actually goes out here are going to be these things. These are the nitrogenous bases. These are the letters of RNA or the letters of DNA. Cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil in RNA. Cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine in DNA. Uh, the other difference here is in DNA we actually have a double helix of so those attached together. But the one thing we haven't talked about is the sidedness or the directionality of nucleic acids. So if we look here at this one sugar, if I count these off, let me find a color that you can actually see. This is called the one prime carbon right here. This is the two prime carbon and the three prime carbon would be right here. This would be the four right here and then this would be the five prime. You see they write that up here, five prime carbon. So what does that mean? If we're looking at the RNA, there's going to be a three prime end at this end and that means there's going to be a five prime on, end on the other side. In other words, RNA flows in one direction from three prime in this case to five prime. If we look over here on this side, this would be the three prime end of this strand that means if we follow it all the way up, this would be the five prime stand of this one. Likewise, this one runs in the op opposite direction. This would be the three prime end, and this would be the five prime. And so when you see three prime and five prime, what does that mean? It's just referring to that sugar. In this case, it's a deoxyribose, if we're talking about DNA, and which carbon it's attached onto. So is DNA parallel? Yes, but it's also, we sometimes refer to it as anti-parallel. What that means is that this one runs in this direction, and this one runs in the opposite direction. It becomes really important when we start copying our DNA. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next ones are going to be called proteins. Proteins are made up of amino acids. And this is myoglobin. It's one of the first ones that we got the structure of. You can see an alpha helix here. I don't see any beta pleated sheets. A pretty simple kind of a protein. What are the building blocks of proteins? Those are amino acids. And so how many are there? There are 20 amino acids. Those 20 amino acids make up the proteins that we're made up of. And so we have to get these 20 essential amino acids in our diet. But let's break down the parts of an amino acid. What do we got? Well, we have a carbon in the middle. We have a hydrogen off one side. We have a carboxyl group, a functional group on this side, which is a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen. And then we have an amino group on this side, which is a nitrogen attached to two hydrogens. And so if you look through every one of these amino acids, they all have that. So this would be the carbon here in the middle, 
Uh, this would be our carboxyl group, our amino group. So every one of these amino acids has that same part to it. All of this up here is going to be exactly the same. So what makes every amino acid different is going to be the side chain. So all the stuff that's hanging off of these are the R chains. And you can see that we get different chemical characteristics. So these ones are going to be electrically charged. These are polar side chains. Um, these ones are going to be hydrophobic. These ones right here would be hydrophilic. And so we're going to have chemical characteristics depending on what amino acid you are. You don't have to memorize all the amino acids, but you have to know that that's what gives the structure to proteins. Because it's amino acid after amino acid after amino acid. And if you think about it, let's say I'm a hydrophobic amino acid, I'm going to fold myself really far on the inside of the protein to give it this specific structure. Now it also has directionality, just like in DNA we had a 5' prime and a 3'. Prime. Well, what are going to be the sides? We're going to have a carboxyl side and we're going to have an amino side. Uh, and so as we hook those together, we're going to have a sidedness to a protein or a directionality to that. So example, when I eat that big steak, we have to have two enzymes that break down those proteins called trypsin and chymotrypsin, and they're each going to work on different sides. Uh, and they're going to gobble up that protein uh, until we eventually break it down into its amino acids, which we can use to make our proteins. Okay, next ones are going to be the lipids. Lipids give us energy, but remember they also make the membranes inside us. Um, lipids, these are all different types of lipids. Lipids, cholesterol, uh, triglycerides. This would be regular fat that makes ice cream taste so good. Phospholipids, you remember, phospholipids are going to make up the cell membranes. But if you look through all of these, can you see one thing that ties them together? Well, it's this long kind of... Uh, jaggedy line that comes out the end. And what is that long jaggedy line? It's a carbon, 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 carbon. And then there's going to be hydrogen around the outside. And so you've got hydrogen around the outside, you've got carbon on the inside, and so we call that a hydrocarbon tail. And so hydrocarbon tails are going to be found in, in cholesterol, fatty acids, all of these have hydrocarbon tails. What makes those interesting? Well, there's a huge amount of energy that we can release from that. So fat has a large amount of energy. But the other thing that's important is that makes them nonpolar. Since they're nonpolar, they don't like to grab on to water. And that's why if you throw fat in water, it doesn't mix. Um, except a phospholipid. Remember, a phospholipid is going to have this nonpolar portion back here. And then it's going to have a polar portion up here. So it's amphipathic. It has this charged portion, which is polar, up here. And that's going to be what faces the outside of a cell membrane. And then this is going to face the inside. Now another important characteristic of lipids is are they saturated or unsaturated? What does that mean? Well, you can see that a lot of these, these are simply free fatty acids, are going to be straight. And a lot of these are going to be bent. And the reason that these are bent is because they have a double bond. If you get a double bond right here, that's going to cause this to actually bend on itself. If you are unsaturated, that means that you don't have hydrogen all the way down, and so you're going to be bent. If you are saturated, saturated means you're going to have hydrogen all the way around the outside. It's going to be uh, straight. What's the consequence of that? Butter is a saturated fat. What does that mean? It's straight and it's going to be a liquid at room temperature. Margarine has had hydrogen added to a normally unsaturated fat and that hydrogen, if you add it here, it can straighten it out. So margarine would normally be just a vegetable oil, but adding hydrogen, bubbling hydrogen through it, you can make it straight. And so what's a trans fat? Trans fats are fats that have been Hydrogen has been added or it just naturally occurs. And so what we're finding is that trans fats are bad in our diet. It's generally better to have unsaturated fats. It doesn't lead to heart disease, but I digress. Last one then is going to be carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give us energy. Um, so all of this, what you talk about as carbs, is, is, uh, is giving us energy. But it also can give us structure as well. So chitin, for example, in insects or cellulose in plants is structure. What's the building block then? The building block is going to be uh, sugars. So glucose is that quintessential sugar. Here's a, different, a couple of different types of glucose, alpha and beta, and it depends on where this hydroxyl group comes off of this. So this would be a simple monomer glucose, but you can put it together. So amylose, for example, is what makes up most of starch found in spaghetti. It's just a glucose attached to a glucose attached to a glucose. Now directionality, what we talk about in, in carbohydrates is where 
where that bond comes off. Does it come off here or does it come off here? And that's going to give us the structure. So for example, amylose might be very, uh, very linear, but glycogen is going to be um, almost, can, you can have a big glycogen molecule that's almost spherical in shape. And so the bonding is important uh, as far as carbohydrates go. So again, building block is going to be glucose. Building block is going to be sugars. How do we put those together? How do we attach these together? It's going to be that dehydration synthesis. And so those are the four building blocks uh, of life, four macromolecules. You should know what they are, what they do, what the monomers are, and I hope that's helpful.